Okay, guys, so welcome back to another episode of Rex to Rides. We are still continuing to turn your hard earned cash into unfinished projects and broken dreams. Today, we're going to look at a bit of auto electrical. Um, for the most, actually, an immobilizer and relay system which we've built that integrates with a central locking. As you can see, we've got a little central locking remote system that we put in and uh, and that also immobilizes the car so we're actually going to focus on that but at some point when your project you you, you are going to find yourself faced with um, auto electrical so this is going to be quite a detailed uh, video on on exactly what relays and the rest of the stuff do um, and you're going to get faced with ground issues and electrical problems like what is that what is that so a good understanding of it's also quite loose um, auto electrical is going to help you out quite nicely in this project this car honestly it wasn't too bad um, but it did need some work there was always on heavy duty cable coming through the firewall with no un completely unfused and you know there were there were a few things which yeah we can see we've redone the fuse and relay box um yeah you know, there were a few things that that really could have become problematic that's not what the video is about this is more just it's going to be lengthy um and we are going to go into just the basics of relays leds everything and how they work so Bear with us, and you can customize your system to how you want it. Uh, so firstly, I like my central locking. Um, I love my central locking. The problem with keys, they wear out and everything. So this car has actually become keyless. I keep this key because, well, we've got to put fuel in at some point in time. So what we've done here, let's start with it locked. When you get to the car, you want to, you want to keep it as simple as possible. You don't want anyone to have to get into the car and this button, that button, they have to do this and that. What they got to do is unlock the car, get in the car, switch on the ignition, and our battery's a little bit tired. Start the car. Then the car's running. And you switch it off. That's as simple as you really, really want it to be. Um, how to get it that simple is a different animal altogether because, um, oh, actually, this is quite cool. I love this shit. That nice little quality little start button. See, our battery's a little bit tired and the motor needs an overhaul. Nonetheless, let's get to it because. There's all sorts of events that are going to happen here. First off, well, you don't have a key, so you've got to immobilize it somehow. So we have had to immobilize it using the remote. So when you lock it, you unlock it, LED goes green, you lock it, LED goes red. And uh, when our LED is red, there's no starting happening here. There's nothing happening here. And when we unlock the car, LED goes green, and we start the car. Then our car is running. But now what we don't want is when we car is running, when we lock it, we don't want it to immobilize, so we have to build something in that will prevent any sort of locking the car from switching off the engine. This is pretty crucial when you're driving, that you kind of need your engine switched on. Uh, it might sound ridiculous to some, but... For the most, really, when you're driving, engine's got to be running. It's kind of what you're looking for. So what we've done is we have, while we are here, we're just going to go over this. 
We've used a little magic relay, which we're going to go over a bit later. And we've used a relay off a garage door receiver. And so what's happening is here is that you've got your ignition power in. Ignition, we use red. Generally, yellow is an always on power. And then your earth, ground, negative, which we'll get to later. And then we've got our LED, red and green. I've used a blue cable because I don't have a green one. These two are our immobilizers, and these two cables is what's driving our magic little relay over here, which I have been searching for for years. And that is exactly what has made the system possible. Uh, what has happened here, uh, what annoys me a bit is that the whole dash has to come off again. So you can get a lot of, um, you can just look at the condition of this interior. It's lovely. It really is fantastic. You get a lot of uh, cheaper alarm immobilizer systems with central locking in that. And, and the system, it took me three days to install it really nice. I had the dash off. I had everything wired in. When you press the brake while you're driving, the doors lock for you. And then when you switch off ignition, the doors unlock. And it had all these fancy features, which are really nice. It had a siren. It had everything. The problem is that it also had an auto arm. So if you unlock the door accidentally and the door isn't opened, well, then it's just going to auto arm itself. It had all sorts of, which gets very annoying, but it also had all sorts of auto arms that even when you press the brake to tell the car that you were in, it would auto arm. And I tried to disarm this thing. And with its programming, it actually just blew up the door actuators, which didn't help me much. I wasn't very happy about that. And ended up ripping the system out and going for a basic central locking system, which we'll go over in a bit. But all it is essentially is a, a remote. It comes with two remotes and four door actuators. Had no immobilizer, no nothing. But that's what you want, something that unlocks and locks the doors. Bottom line, from there you can start, if you have a good understanding of the relays and the electrical system of how the car works, then you can start to um, customize it yourself. Because what you really want is a lot of customizing. You want the car as you've done it. It's your project. And I've wanted this keyless like that. I want an immobilizer. I want a siren. And I want a buzzer that will warn me when I open the doors that your headlights are still on because that's also quite useful. Your door actuators, while we are here, we're just going to go over it a little bit. There's a door actuator. It's a little motor that goes in. And these aftermarket systems just tie on like that. And they, where are we? Just basically pull it down or they lift it up. And they tie on very simply with a little connector like that. And that's how they work. So let's get a bit more into details with the relays and the electrical around this. And hopefully you will have a better understanding on how it works and you can customize the system, your car, your project, how you want it. Okay, right, so back to the drawing board. Um, we've seen what we've got. We've seen what we've done. Let's see how we do it. I think the first thing to understand is that here's your car. And this is a pickup. It's going to look like that. And inside is a battery. Your battery is drawn like that, usually. And then they're going to talk about something like called earth or ground. So that's your negative of the battery, and that's your positive. Your positive will go to something like a light. Let's say, for example, there's your light. That will be a switch drawn like that. Let's move a little closer. And then that will go to ground. And, and this is the basics of automotive electrical, is that one has to remember at all time that that, the bodywork of the car, is your negative. On your negative cable, it's not like a normal electrical system, like where you this will be a wire sort of like that. The body of the car 
is the earth. It is a wire. That's essentially what it is. The body of your car is a wire. So that's how that, that's your basics. If you can understand that, you can sort of understand um, somewhere here I have a door switch. This is a door switch. Of, and, and, and this is in, in essence also a relay because it has an input. When your door is closed, it is normally open when your door is closed. So your door pushes up against there. That's a contact point and that's a contact point. That contact point screws to ground. Ground or earth, so that's your ground or earth. That's why you always want to be checking that all your grounds or earths, let's just call it a ground for now, are, are good solid connections. They're not rusted, they're not covered with paint or anything because it's a wire. So you want that wire's integrity to be great and that's a contact point. So that's our earth switch or our ground switch, our door switch. So this is, let's say this is this. This is your interior light of the car. It's connected to the positive of the battery and there goes there. Now in this state, it is open because your door is closed. When you open the door, it goes to ground. So it completes that circuit and your light will switch on. So when you open your car door, your light comes on. That's 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 the essence of how that works. So what is a relay? How do we do this electrically, this, this particular thing? A relay is a coil. It's actually a fascinating piece of equipment because what happens here? Now this is this is a drawing which I've got of this little relay, this little guy that we saw in in the Isuzu, in its immobilizer. A relay is a coil, so that's its coil. And the coil operates a mechanism of sorts, which then causes that switch to do something. Now, there's a lot that can be learned from this, this drawing. And first of all is, you've got bar stable. What does that mean? Set, reset. This is a little different. This is not something you're going to encounter often. So let's simplify this. Let's let's get ourselves, we'll come back to that, a normal four-pin relay. Now this is something that you're going to see a lot in your car. Um, it may not make a lot of sense. There's a lot of pins. We used to there being one or two, and now there's four or even five you know what's going on here we don't really know so let's simplify it often these things have got a drawing on them so this has got a little drawing on here let's see if we can zoom in there you go so it says pin number 85 and 86 operate the coil pin number 87 and 87a and 30 are the switch so it's important to realize that here's 87a and here's 30 and why they call the 30, not 86, we'll get to that. And 85 and 86 and are, are this bit over here. So often, you know, just, just read the relay or look at the model number and, and download the diagram. And this is something what is fascinating about a relay. Did you know that your computer is nothing but a system of relays? That's all it is. So... Back to the basics of this, because we digress a little, and we've lost our earth wire, which is blue. Ha, ah, there it is. Why it's blue? It's because that's what I've got. So, the first thing to remember is that you've got your coil, and you've got your, so let's, you need a little multimeter. Let's put that back on. And that these two entities and those two entities, this is your coil. So here you're going to have resistance. There you can see there's a bit of resistance. It's not a closed circuit because it is a coil. And a coil forms a magnet. So that's one way to test. If you've got a relay that you don't know what's going on with it. So we've got a few of those and we, we don't have that. So let's see what's going on. One way to test is, is there 
See, that is normally closed. There's another thing to learn. So that is a direct, there's no resistance there. It just, if we can get it on, goes to zero. And that's it. That is a direct line. This, this thing is closed. And that, there isn't continuity, 100% continuity. There's a resistance there. There's 77 ohms of resistance. So surely that must be the coil. So let's see if it's a coil. There's one way to do this, and that is to just, don't plug it on, test it. If you hear that, fantastic, you've got the coil. And a relay usually has one coil, so it's single coil. And the coil is that bit that we saw on the diagram, it said set and reset. That is your input of the relay, that tells the relay what to do. That's that's like you've opened the door, activate that relay. You've switched on your lights, activate that relay. You put your spotlights on, activate that relay. Everything is done with relays. And a relay relays information. That's what it does. Don't look at it as a switch. Look at it as something that relays information. So basically what we want here, we want out of the circuit, as it is not powered up, We want this relay to switch off when there's power on it. And there you have it. So when your power is on the relay, it's switched off. Remove that power, it's going to switch on. So like an alarm or something. We want to know that once that power is removed, it will switch on. So lovely. We have a purpose for this, which we're going to get to later. So a bit of relay technology uh, terms, terminology. This is what we've learned, that this is the coil. Our coils generally are not, in automotive relays, are not polarity dependent. They don't depend on, you know, that's not positive, that's not negative or positive or ground or anything. It, you can put them either way. It doesn't make a difference. It just needs power through. And it's going to be doing the same thing either way. Um, and it is relaying information to this. So this, yes, we can look at this as just being a switch. But it's relaying information. It's telling me that when, and this is very important when it comes to, to sort of designing your system. When there is power there. So for example, when the door opens we want that to switch off so it's power going through there and we want that to be open or closed now here's the thing you're gonna see on a lot of relays common nc no now this is a garage door receiver and um but it's essentially a relay. It takes an input, which is from the remote, and it relays that information to do something in a certain way. This is just a little bit more versatile than that, but it's the same thing, really. In fact, that's the same thing. So what we've got is common, which is your input. Then you've got NC, which means normally closed, and NO, which is normally open. So what's happening here? What have we got here? We've got a relay. Normally means when the power is off. What happens when the power is off? So this thing has is switched on. So this is normally closed. This relay is normally closed. Once we powered it up, it opens. So this is basically a 12 volt NC monostable signal relay. This is this is what your your relay is. So let's move on to a five pin one. Now don't get caught out with the five pin ones. Because there we go. There's a there's there's that. Same thing except we've got five pins. 
So that's our common. The numbers stay the same, which is why 30 is a little bit out. It's not 86, 87, 85, 87 A or whatever. It's 30, which means it's a common. That, that's your line in. There, it's exactly the same. But there is nothing there. So here, if we powered this up, you can hear it click. Now, what was normally open is now closed. And that is no longer. So we have a better decision maker here with this fire pin relay because when it's powered, do you want something switched on or switched off? Here, you only have the option when it's depowered, it's switched on. When you power it up, it's switched off. So this is a five pin single coil and that's a signal relay. They're called signal relays. And that is your normally closed, normally open. What does normally mean? Normal is what it is in the stable version. In other words, a stable version is when it's not powered up. So if your battery is disconnected, your ignition is off or whatever, this wire comes through. When that is off, it stays like that. So by stable, we mean that that's now energized, that's now stable. This relay is monostable, which means that it is only stable, it only has one position when the power is off, not two positions. So it is a monostable relay, and most of the automotive relays, in fact, most of the relays you're going to come across are going to be monostable. They are only, when the power is off, they revert back to a certain, that's their default position. And the in, in, in a monostable relay, that's where the word normally Normally it is closed or normally it is opened. Here is another little one that we've managed to power up for you to get on to our next bit of terminology. This is a gate remote. So there's our common, these are normally open and normally closed. So again, this is monostable. So when it's powered, when it's not powered, that is normally open. And that's, in other words, switched off. Normally closed means switched on. So let's power this little guy up. This is a, a, a different gate remote or re remote gate receiver. Gate garage door. And here's our, our input. Is a remote. Okay, so there it switches. And there it switches. I've set this to latch, which is the next. Remember these, this just powers the system. That drives the coil. So it says normally open, normally closed. Press the button. And that now becomes closed or switched on. However, if we return it to latch, There it switches on just for a second. So you've also got latch and pulse. And what pulse means is that, so let's take our normally open position. Okay, that's switched off. And we activate it. It just sends a pulse through, that's all. When we want it to stay on, that's called latching. So let's get our little jumper pins on. I know this is a very long and arduous video, but I know a lot of guys don't understand relays and what they're trying to do. So here is our normally open. And what we've done, now it remains like that until we tell it to go back. 
However, again, this is monostable. Because if we take the power off, it reverts back to its default, which is that one being normally open. So that's basically what some of the terminology means. Now, when you are, it's very important to know these things because when you're trying to buy a relay, you, you kind of want to know what what you want to know what you want to do first. We'll get back to that because that might be useful to you in the future. Um, here we have a five pin monostable uh, relay with a normally open and normally closed position, as we can see on this drawing. Now, you go to the automotive electrical guy, and he supplies you with this relay, and he's a little bit unsuspecting, and so are you, because nobody's really looking at what they're buying. And before you know it, there's no more normally open, normally closed. And I've been caught a few times by this, where I'm like, this relay seems a little bit buggered, because, well... You know, surely one of them should be normally closed. We don't know that. And as it turns out, neither of us read the, the side of the relay and what it's doing. So we power it up. Again, which is our 8, 86 and 87, whatever we kind of know by now, which is which. And we want to see what's happening. So none of these were connecting, which means it's normally open. Now, that's closed and that's closed because we didn't read what's happening on the front of it. And what is it saying on the front here? There it says, both 87s, both of these pins, are normally open so this is a relay which really you know okay if you want to put power to both sides of the car say for example a um now here's something we can test we want to put something to our hazard lights that isn't going to work because our indicators aren't going to work if we join them anyway i'm sure you can use some imagination to figure out what we're going to do with that but yeah i got caught again been caught a few times by that and so here's another one this is from the auto watch system that was in the car and generally your thinner wires as you can see on this other little circuit board we've got here it's got little inputs here your two smaller wires or the signal that's what powers the coil your bigger wires are what's relaying the information this is we'll get to that in a second but here we have the auto watch and again we're listening or a click it's possible we've destroyed that for some reason right so we check it now so what I've done here, my problem here was, well, that's what happened. Those were probably touching. No, it's dead, Jim. Is we bought this, this system that had all the fancy functions and everything and trying to remove some of those functions were absolutely impossible. So I went to Yield Faithful, which is just this central locking unit with remote. That's it. Not very expensive. And it gives you four actuators, some mounting things, a control module, and a two remotes. That's it simple. All it does is lock and unlock doors. And that's your actuator over here. This is it. And what happens with an actuator is when you put the polarity through one way, it does one thing, which is lock. So that wants to lock. Now if we switch them over, it unlocks. And that's all this is doing. 
Note, this does not have a ground in the earth. These don't have grounds in earth. They, they, they are just, there's a solenoid in there, and that's one way or the other way. So I've got the system in now, and I've got this remote, and that remote tells it go that way, or it switches the polarity and it goes the other way. And that's what our outdoor actuator does. Now with actuators, of course, none of it remains very simple. What we've got is a slave actuator with blue and green. Then you've got a master actuator, which is supposed to be on your driver's door. With your blue and your green, that does the same thing. Nothing different there. However, and this is something if you're doing your own system, and if you're going to do it this way, you really got to be aware of this. There is your brown, white, and black coming. Now, these, all of these five feed back to the unit. And then these go to each door. So this is for a four-door car. You get one of these, you get three of these. This is the master that goes on the driver's door. Now, what these other ones for are they are telling the unit that the door is unlocked or it's locked. So if you're driving along in your car and you unlock that door, it's going to unlock all doors. But we don't want that. So if you're going to do it this way, and I'm going to explain to you a little bit later why we don't want that, use only these two because these are all we are interested in because after all these years, as I said, we found our secret weapon, which is this little guy. <coughs> Pardon me. So before, what I did was I would install the central locking. And then I didn't have a way to immobilize this car. And how do you immobilize a car? So back to our drawing board. Bearing in mind, here's our battery. That is always on power. There is another power supply, which is your accessories, and another one, which is your ignition. Ignition on there is another one, which I, for the life of me, cannot work out which it is, but that's how it works. So you have it always on, you have your, um, and your ignition. So I just call it always on an ignition. And this is the actual ignition from the, from the Isuzu, so there's a lot of wires. This is the module that sits at the back, and the key sits in the front, and that key turns this bit in the middle, which I now have nothing to turn it with. And what that is doing, turn it with a key, is it's going to various positions. The last one is on a spring. So the first thing you want to do is you want to have your car switched off because now we need to ah there you are we need to figure out what's going on here so this is still this may look familiar to you you'll see that mounted right behind the ignition key and i know but you don't always know so we make use of this this is a lovely little tool and this is the first thing you buy when you are now going to tackle your automotive electrical. That clamps onto an earth. So that can clamp on anywhere. That can clamp onto the bodywork of the car, onto any bit of steel. And when you touch that, you're going to get a red light. That tells you that that's live. So let's make this live. And the way we're going to do that, I know from my experience, that this was the always on power. Now there's no earth here. These are just power lines. And they are all doing various things. So we are activating the switch because that goes straight to the battery. And now you get stuck in behind your car. You find a little piece of steel to attach this to. And off you go. You start probing these things. And when you're probing around like this, Okay, that's on, and that's on, and that's on. So, ah, that's because we've switched the whole thing on. Let's switch it all off. 
Let's start right from the beginning. So our key is off. You wouldn't be having this problem in your car. When you start probing, none of these are coming on. And you want to know now, okay, what's going on? Ah, there's some power. So that's what we call probing. We want to see. Uh, now, it's it's a lot easier just to have this with one hand that you're not using your multimeter and it will just light up. Obviously, test it first on a little battery or something. Now, when we switch the car on, we know the black is the always on. So our first position is accessories, which isn't any of nothing switched on. I have a feeling that first position was, who oh, knows what, I don't remember that. So there, okay. Hmm, nothing, nothing, ah. So blue are the accessories. Accessories are things like your radio or what do I call, you know, maybe you want your cigarette lighter to only switch on when you be usable. So that's anything you want only usable when the key is turned to accessories, but there must be a key in the car is that one. Now on this particular car, I don't actually want anything working, including the radio, because the radio is already connected to the yellow is connected to always on power through a separate circuit and our uh, that's really it the rest of it so so i'm quite happy now next position we know the blue is accessories is to switch on the ignition but once we switched on the ignition ha which is that one so there you have it. Oops. That's accessories. That's ignition. Our red hasn't lit up. We don't know what that is. And there are no more positions except when we do that. Now, when you turn it and it clicks, let's get a better screwdriver. When you turn it and it clicks, that's your starter. So you turn it, and now we know that the white, that's your starter. So that's going to send a signal to the starter. And that's what we've got. So how do we install, first of all, where are we going to start with an immobilizer? We need a four-pin relay. That is always off normally open because we need the ignition switched on so here we go back to the drawing board and i've gone and gotten a few of these so there's our coil as you can see 71 ohms and this is our it's normally open so great, what do we do? We know we've got always on power. So I've taken this. That's our always on power. And then the rest of these, excluding whatever the other one was, or excluding the starter, connects to there. So that's how it connects. Always on power, ignition. Because I'm joining my accessories and my ignition. So everything switches on when this switches on. And that's how we immobilize the car. We're going to put this in. I've got a heavy duty relay that's got the slightly bigger terminals. This is a 60 or 70 amp one. So if you're if you're cutting ignition wise, these are significantly thicker than your normal automotive wiring. There's a lot more current going through. Get yourself some heavy duty ones because that's what you're going to need. Um, so this is going to switch off our ignition and our accessories and everything. So unless we power this up. So you find a source from your always on. 
going to there are going first of all to a switch of sorts it could be a switch underneath the dashboard it could be anything and that will power will come to there when you switch it on from there off it goes to earth so yes you can have a little switch in your dashboard and that will immobilize your car when you switch that switch on that will switch this on and you can go ahead so this is the basics of what we've done we've got our ignition are always on power comes to here from the ignition this whole thing has been removed and from there if if there's power going through there and when when you're trying to work your 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 whole circuit out or any relay circuit just use the words if then and and turn it into a story so when or if there is power going across here it will allow the ignition to switch on it will allow because remember you still have to turn the key but i've joined the always on power to here and i've joined the ignition onto there so if i turn if i put power on this our ignition will switch on so you can still have this and just put that in your ignition line you can just put cut cut it with that so you're still cutting your ignition but you still have to turn the key so when the key is turned on to the on position and there's power going across here your ignition will switch on so now i have this this immobilizer in if you remember from the isuzu what we had there was um we have no keys so what we did we have only the central locking and that is very much dependent on a polarity going through it's not dependent on a live wire coming from somewhere or an, a positive wire and a neutral wire it's not dependent on that it's a switching polarity so how and it's also only a pulse it's only a pulse going through here so so how are we going to immobilize the car so what i did initially on the colt was i actually got one of these which is your et systems garage remote and you take your always on power here and your earth here to power the unit so it can re receive a signal and then common is a line from the always on and then normally closed i had it on here and so your power goes from there to there to where is that big heavy duty relay to here to earth so when i press the button what happened was the car is no longer immobilized when i press it again the car is immobilized what i liked about this so this is a very simple system is that you can just remove that for latch which is very much the same as this these are exactly the same um but this is hidden somewhere underneath the dashboard so with your et systems is that your first program a remote that you program which your remote looks like this you can have one is your garage door one is your gate and one is your car to immobilize everything you can go on the same just different receivers but if you have a master receiver that's programmed to this a master transmitter the first one you program is the master and then you press the button on the master and if you get a new remote you press that button and then it beeps and then it's programmed so there's no need to open up the whole dashboard just to program your uh, receiver for another remote with this one you do you have to actually press the learn button so that's the difference between these two but essentially a latching type or a receiver like this with a latching option will and a common normally open normally closed will allow you to have your ignition immobilized but remember if you in the beginning of the video when i said no listen guys you know you want this thing to be as simple as possible you want everything to be on one remote so now you sit with this problem 
is that now you've got two remotes, one to unlock the doors, another one to demobilize the car, and then you can start it, which this still starts with a key, it's a transponder key. And what now? You, you want this thing to be as simple as possible. That's what you need. So what we've got here that is operated by this is switching polarity. There's no one line coming from here that can go through here to the earth because when you switched it, it's just going to short everything because now you've got a positive going straight onto the earth. So what do we do to make this thing immobilize? And this is where, when I showed you that little box, I was overjoyed to find this little guy. So this is that one you saw in the receiver. So let's go back to that. Now remember, on a on your central locking, this system, it only switches polarity. And then I found this. Bar stable, double coil, double pole, latching relay. And what bar stable means is that when there is no power on this whatsoever, it's stable in both ways, which is fantastic. What's also fantastic is that to set it, say, that way, you put the polarity through there. To switch it to the other way, you've got to reverse these polarities. So, aha, that's it. That was our aha moment that what we've got here it's very hard to see this little guy there's a coil on one side as the drawing says and on the other side is another coil so that's all you need because what you do is you take these two wires and you connect them to the output of your um remote receiver box, your remote box, or your central locking control unit, where these join onto, and that will cause that switch to switch over. So your power can come through there, and it can go out there, and that power will then power up that relay. So when your doors are unlocked, this little relay will say the doors are unlocked, you may not immobilize the car. So in other words, put power across here. When your doors are locked, relieve the power off here, so switch off. So basically in that position, that those two, if those two are connected, your power comes in the common and your line comes out of there onto this one and that one goes to earth. Your car will not start but set it again and that will switch over and your car will start with the battery disconnected it is still going to do the same thing it is because it's bi stable so yes that was our answer to this immobilizer conundrum because now what you can do is you can actually take this immobilizer off your existing central locking unit. Just jump it onto there. But remember now, there's an issue. Because what's going to happen when you're busy driving and you lock your doors? So here we have this again, a master. And the, the master and the slave. So when you lock the doors, it's going to tell all the other so it's going to send a signal through here also and it's going to stop your car and this is where you need to find yourself another little relay so a little relay like this which is 12 volts and let's let's just have a little test on this one normally or even you can even use this one so what i like to do here is that when the ignition is on so basically your, your, your car, your ignition is on, your car is running. I find which is 
So now the ignition is off. And we know that that is open. But we don't want that. Your ignition is off. You want your central locking to immobilize and de-immobilize. So, oh, that you see, we get caught again by that double output. So, we go to this one. That's the one. So our ignition needs to power up this relay. And when our ignition powers up the relay, what's going to do is it's going to switch it on. But when the ignition is switched on, we want to essentially cut one of those lines so it cannot affect the immobilizer at all when your car is running so we go back to this one remember this one that one was normally closed so if we put this these two contacts in this line when your ignition is off and you're out the car and you lock and unlock your car these are still going to get their signal from the, the door controls, the blue and the green. And they are going to allow your car to immobilize and demobilize. The minute you switch your car on, like that. So we've switched it on now. Remember, this is not polarity dependent. That's very polarity dependent. So if you're following me nicely here, this will now no longer have contact. So no matter what you're doing with your doors, switched on, locked, unlocked, whatever, it is not going to immobilize your car. In a very similar way, what we've done is with the LEDs over here. Whoops, we need that on the other way. Is we have our power from always on coming to this side because this is double pole these do not talk to each other they're doing the same thing but they are not connected in any way that coil and that coil are not connected in any way so this is just on our demobilizer now just on onto that other one relay we had here that's why we had two relays in that little white box in the beginning of the video because one of them was to cut the power from the ignition but do you remember we had leds coming out so we had an always-on power coming in here to the, this middle pole. And you obviously have to sync these things up. So we had our always-on power coming in to this middle one. And our green or our red to the LED, which corresponds with locked or immobilized or not immobilized, going out to what is a three pin LED like that. So our always on power comes through there and our always on power goes to there and we've got two wires coming out there. So you're gonna follow that. And then the center one goes back to earth. So if we've got power going in there, it's gonna be red. If you've got power going in there, it's gonna be green. So your power goes through there. If it's going that way, it's gonna be red. If it's going that way, it's going to be green or vice versa. Just the thing on LEDs, please to remember that LEDs are not 12 volts. You don't get 12 volt LEDs. So we need to talk to your supplier. One must always add a little 1K resistor on here. You can add it there or there, but you have to do both. Or you can just add this to the earth side. So then you just need one. And this... Otherwise, you're just going to burn your LED out and you also get a variety of little holders that you can fit in your dash. So that's something to remember. So just to give you a visual representation, as you could see, the car was immobilized or it was not immobilized, red or green. And that's always quite useful for any user when they get in the car to... So this is what's nice or to know where the system's at. 
So this is what's nice about this, is that it can use your central locking to immobilize your car. But obviously, you're not going to run your ignition through here. So you need to use relays. This is very, very light current. So, I mean, your always on can go into there and it can come out to there through your LED and off to earth. That you don't need a, a separate relay for because the relay, and this is also a good example of a relay, is using a light current, which is at your dashboard, to switch on a heavy current, which is in your engine bay or underneath the dash or something. So this I use always on the ignition to immobilize. And with a push button, you push the button. But in that situation, you don't want your car to have this powered by always on. Because you don't want any kid to get in the car and press that, that starter button and burn out your starter or whatever. So for the starter, we also use a heavy duty relay and we take our power from the ignition. Then through your push button switch, which can look like this, and then to here and then to earth. So only when your ignition is on, will that energize that, which will energize that and go to earth. And guys, this is this is the essence really of 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 relays. So what you need to understand is that you get bar stable, monostable relays. Your coil is what powers it. You get a common, which is the line in, you get normally open or normally closed, which is the decision made when you energize it and then you get um we went through the bar stable you get latching or you get non-latching relays most of the relays are going to be non-latching which is pulse um so when you're going out looking for relays these these are the kind of terms that that you're going to have to know to explain exactly to the guy because man oh man did i have a hell of a hard time looking around for that little relay which i've already lost by the way um so yes these 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 are the terms but if you think about it essentially this tablet we're looking at right now at the moment it's processor all it is is millions upon millions of little relays in that processor that's what they are they're transistors so they're switching one way or the other because computer is binary it's one or not it's switched on or switched off so understanding relays and understanding these things is the essence of your auto electrical so guys good luck with that let me know if you have any success thank you okay guys now that we have a better understanding of relays and what they do and how the whole immobilizer works you know if you recall in the last video we had this um four pin let's open it up yeah, it was the four pin normally closed relay. So what would you do with something like that? So we now want to make another system. And remember what I said, we need to use words like when and if and and that when when designing our system, very much like programming. So what we want is we want a buzzer that's going to buzz when our door opens and our lights are on. So when our door opens and our lights are on. So we can use if our light switches are on. When the door opens, the buzzer must go off. But you don't always want, I mean, if you're driving and then you open the door or this or that, you know, it, it's you don't want this buzzer to go every time. You So basically what we want is, is what's going to happen. Let's think of the scenario. When you're finished driving, you're driving in the day, there was a bit of rain, you had your lights on, and then you get home and now it's no longer raining, or you went through a tunnel and your lights are on, and now you got home and it's a sunny day and your lights are still on, and you you want to be warned before you leave the car that your lights are still on. So the first condition is um, obviously if the lights are on. So what we've done is we've used our little probe and we've, we've back probed the light switch. So we found the switch was off. We found the always on power. 
because the daylight running bulbs might run and we don't want any of that. You can also just cut them off with ignition, but you do want to be able to have lights if you're stuck next to the road at night or something. So they, there's usually an always on power going to your light switch. So that light, that comes on and we identify which one is the always on power by having the light switch off. Then we switch the switch to the first position, which is the daytime bulbs. And we probe around and we find which is that. So now we know which is our input when the lights are on. So we found that. So when the lights are on, what's the first thing that you do is you finish driving, you switch off the ignition. So when the lights are on and the ignition is off and you open the door. So those are three conditions that must be met. The lights must be on, the ignition must be off, and you've opened the door. To Then the buzzer will go off. So if you recall, we had this four pin normally closed, so normally switched on relay. And these are activating, uh, this is for the coil. And so in its stable state, so when, when there is no power on it, this is switched on. So what we need to do is connect these two to the ignition. Now I already have, just a, it's something on these plugs, is that I already have a always on and always off and um, I always on an ignition and an earth connectors in, in the console of the car underneath the dash. So I can connect these things because you don't want wires tied on and soldered on and joined in insulation tape. And I really, really prefer using this system to these cheapy. I mean, these you can get them anywhere. These are only really at automotive shops. And then you need to go to an electronic store and get yourself one of these crimpers. You can see they've got different levels and that. And what they do is they crimp on this in a really, really nice and tight. That's not going to come off. And these clip into these connectors, which is pretty standard. Now, you can get these in eight, I think up to eight, where there's eight of them. And what I've done is I've got six of the, in the female version, on the always on, six on the always off uh, ignition, and six of a male version, because that's going to be the earth. So the female will plug into it. Remember your live must always, or your positive must always be a female. So if you see, see if that knocks against something, there's going to be no shorting or anything. Um, so that's just, just, just how I like to do these. So that's why these connectors are now actually ready to go. That's ready to go into the whole earth, uh, lug of, of the earth. And that's ready to go into the ignition. So for now, we're just going to pop that on the earth. And remember, this is normally closed. So when it's in its stable state, it is switched on. So when you're driving the car, it's going to be normally open. It's going to be opened. Then what we've done, here are our two wires, our two normally closed wires. Is we've taken a wire from the the lights, and we have um, that's going to be a female coming from the light switch. Let's get that in there. It's going to be a female. So I've done that that way, and this is going to be a male. So if this connection falls apart, the energized end is that end. If it falls against earth, it's not going to be a problem. So that's why we do it that way. So if the lights, here's first condition. If the lights are on, first condition is met. And now let's say we're busy driving or whatever, our ignition is on, and the door is open. So this is going to go to our door contact. Remember the door contact when the door is closed is like that. And so there's no connection. So when we open the door, it's going to earth this one. So our ignition is on, our lights are on, and we open the door. So 
See, now we've opened the door and there's no buzzer. Because the second condition isn't met. Second condition is the car is switched off. So when you switch it off, so our lights are on, the car is switched off, and we open the door, the buzzer will go off. When we close the door, the buzzer will switch off again. Just one thing on relay. So this is your basic system, which is now ready to go, ready to go in the car, is... Um, Let's go there. It's ready for installation. Again here, that we just need to run a line to the to the door open. Remember at all times, you don't want, your, your system has to work in a stable version. So if we'd use the relay that needs to be powered up in order to cut the, the, this line, um, so basically it was opposite of this. So that pin was over there. And to meet those three conditions, your ignition has to be off and your door has to be open and your lights have to be switched on. Means energizing this relay. Then what's going to happen is if your car is sitting, this relay is constantly drawing current. So when you're designing your system, Always try to ensure that when your car is off, none of your relays are energized. And this is why we have to be very, very um, taken into consideration, which is the normally open, which is the normally closed, and what do we need to do to make that decision. So our three decisions, or our three conditions, for it to make the decision to switch on the buzzer is in its stable state, so depowered state, which is when the car is off, um, our keys are out, the ignition, we're ready to go, but we forgot to switch on the lights, our buzzer goes off. But that, now it's energized. When we are driving, because your alternator is busy charging, so that's not going to be a problem. But switch off the car, open the door, lights are on. Now if we turn the lights off, our car is on. You can still hear it click. We open the door, nothing. We turn the car off, we open the door, nothing. And there you have it. Simple relay put to a very, very good use, which is going to save you a flat battery. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe.